Hi guys, it's Tony Robbins. You're listening to Habits and Hustle. Crush it. Today on the podcast, we have Talia Goldstein. And there is no better time, in my opinion, to have Talia on than the month of February, which is Valentine's Month, the month of love. And uh, Talia is the founder of the matchmaking company, Three Day Rule. And she was a great person to talk to about hacks with dating, trends in dating, how technology has maybe stifled or stunted, actually, uh, relationships and the formation of relationships. And we talk all about it. And she was, she's just a really cool person to talk to. She used to be a TV producer for E! Entertainment. She left her job to host dating events for singles. The parties attended grew so much that in 2013, that she actually founded the matchmaking company, Three Day Rule. Um, and the name actually, she got the name from the movie Swingers, where they waited three days to call a girl after meeting them. So if, if you're familiar with that movie, uh, you remember that. The company grew so large. It's, uh, it's huge in the country. They have offices in LA, New York, Chicago, San Francisco, Boston, uh, everywhere. And their success rate is really, really high. So, uh, who else better than her to talk to about how to find love if you don't have it, how to maintain the, you know, maintain it. And like I said, it's a great conversation, a great time to be speaking about it. I hope you enjoy the call conversation. I always love talking about love and dating. All right. So today on Habits and Hustle, we have Talia Goldstein, who is the founder of uh something that I love, which, cause I love talking about dating and relationships, uh, three day rule. Is that the name of the, the three day rule? Exactly. Cause I, I love it. So she, it's a, it's obviously a dating company. She, she's a, she's like a, a, a matchmaker in a day when I feel like everything is so much about technology and apps. Number one, how are you, how, what happens in that world? Like now with apps being so dominant for people to meet other people mm-hmm. are, are like, I feel like you're like a dinosaur, right? Like, a, <laughs> like a matchmaker is like a. Di- it's not. It's and I love it because it's a very personal thing. But how does it work when you have that type of competition? Yeah, it's interesting because we started the company pre apps, and then the apps came onto the scene. And we what were, year did you guys start? Uh, 2010. Oh wow! So at yeah. the time, it was Match and eHarmony and J Date, and then the Millionaire Matchmaker, yeah. and there was nothing in between. So matchmaking was so exciting. And then the apps came out and we thought, okay, our business is dead. Right. But what happened was people started using the apps and they're really exhausting. And it's actually quite hard to meet people through them. Yeah. That they would try it. It would be demoralizing and frustrating. And so then they would turn to us so they could outsource their love lives. So the apps ended up actually helping our business. Really? So I, like, I want to talk about this because I'm I'm so fascinated. That's why I really wanted to have you on the podcast. I just loved here. Like, I obviously I was telling you before, and you said you knew, but me and my best friend started our own charity called for breast cancer, and the and the charity is basically us auctioning off bachelors for dates. Because I was naturally that person, like you, I'm sure, where I just like love to set people up and match people mm-hmm. together. And I'm glad to hear that your business has actually, like it actually kind of got more elevated and did better because to me, exactly what you said, like the apps to me can be, it's a burnout thing too. Like, and psychologically you get, you swipe so much, even if that person is perfect for you, you just don't pay attention because you, you're, it's psychologically, you're curious to know who the next person is or the next person is. That's exactly right. Right. And- And often what we do on the apps is we just swipe on what's familiar. Yeah. We're used to a certain type. And so we're just saying yes to only that type. And so I'm convinced people are swiping right past their soulmates because they're not stepping out of their comfort zone. When if you met someone in person, like at work or at a bar, you might be more attracted to someone because of their personality. But maybe if you saw them online, you would swipe left. Totally. You know, and I'm glad that you said that too, because so much of it is personality. I don't care what people say, like looks get you in the door. But after that, if you don't, if you're like, if you're like a, if you're like be mean or like have a bad personality, it's, it makes you that much more unattractive. True. Right. And for men, I would say attraction 
is a little bit more important. Yeah, like for on the, sure. They have to be attracted from the start. But women, we have the luxury of having it grow over time. So if you go on a date with someone and you're like remotely attracted to them, if you keep going and they have an amazing personality, by the fifth date, they're the hottest guy in the room. Right, exactly. Well, let's let's talk about that. So let's go with, in your experience, men versus uh, women, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, men for sure are visual, right? But mm -hmm. still, have you not... Okay, I, I still believe that you can be that you can go with a smoking hot girl, but if she is at the end of the day doesn't want to do the same things you want to do, and she's like kind of bitchy, or mm -hmm. she's kind of not you know aligned with you know her personality is not great. Do, do you see that the guys actually still want to date them more? No, they it's, don't. Okay, it's short term. Short term, right? So the attraction, like you said, gets you in the door to these specific guys, but then you, there has to be more. They ask for someone who challenges them. It's really important for men to find someone who's passionate about something. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what it is. So it can be career or yoga or a charity, mm -hmm. but they want to know that you have a life outside of them. So there's obviously more to it in order to sustain a long-term relationship. And with women, it's more. Women usually are asking for stability yeah. like for them they focus on someone who has a great career and financially stable. It's a little bit more about whether they want kids or a specific religion. Yeah. What we do with both men and women is we do an intake call where we ask them to tell us everything they're looking for. So they can come up with a really long list if they want. Right. And then we break it down into three must haves, three deal breakers and 10 nice to haves. So we help them categorize to oh, figure out what that. is going to be important. And the must-haves are things that are going to make a difference in 20 years. Okay, so let's start. Because I know that you, uh, we started, but like you never, you, you were just doing this by like on the side. Like you were naturally somebody who were just, who liked to set people up. But weren't you working, I saw or heard like at E! doing like True Hollywood <laughs> Stories or something yeah, like that? That's exactly right. So I was a segment producer on True Hollywood Story. Okay. And I, I love, the, I love that show. <laughs> I love that show. It's the best. It was so fun. But is it off the I, air now? You know, it's back. It it's, went off the air and now, now they're back. It's such a good show. It was so great though. It was like so captivating. <laughs> I yeah. loved it. <laughs> so I started at Behind the Music, VH1, yeah. and then I moved to True Hollywood Story. I and love it. the job was really fun, but everyone was single around me. And I just have always loved dating advice and hearing people's stories. So I would sit in my cubicle and give relationship advice. And I started to match up my friends and my coworkers and had a ton of success. Did you? So yes, matching up really interesting combinations, but I would just listen to them and what they were looking for. And I'd say, trust me on this. You need to meet X, Y, and Z, pair them together. And they would be so happy. And I really? matched some really challenging people in my office, one guy in particular, just was really negative and people weren't stoked to be around him. But after I matched him, he was so nice. He was sending me gifts. He was a totally new person. So wow. I just loved that feeling. And while I was at E, I started hosting parties. And that way I could bring my coworkers and my friends together so they could meet in a more organic way. We started off with 20 people, then we had 300 people, and then 600 people. We were taking over these huge hotels, like the Viceroy and the London, all wow. with these singles because they were having trouble finding someone. Is it mostly, because you have, okay, so just the company itself, like the three-day rural com uh, company, do you have multiple offices? Like what, so, because I would think LA, New York would be really, really tough. And the other more smaller cities are obviously easier to date. It's so interesting because every city thinks their city is the hardest to date in. Really? They're all unique. Everyone has a little bit of a different challenge. Like for example, New York, there are more single women than men. So the ratio is off. I would say LA is challenging because we have Hollywood and the standards are really high. Yeah. San Francisco has more, a lot more men, single men. So every city is a little different. Okay, wait, break it down. So LA. So LA, there's more, I would think there's way more single women LA, the too. challenge is Hollywood. So we have all these gorgeous actresses and models walking around. And so the standards are a little bit higher. Right. Your perception is off of what's even like beautiful, though, because the what people think is beautiful is basically what they, they're constantly being told was beautiful, too. Right. right. And I would say we're in D.C. D.C. is a lot more focused on career and ambition. Yeah. 
people are asking for something a little bit different in each city. Okay, and so tell unique. me, so LA, tell me what, tell me, go, go city by city. New York, New York is also career focused, but the issue there is that there are more single women than men. So it just makes it a little bit harder for the women to date there. Uh, and LA, you're saying it's, it's more. LA, I would say it's pretty evenly split. But the men want also, they want girls who are like 18, 19, for the guys are like 60, right? And they're looking, and they and they actually think that if they have money, they can go out with that girl. Mm -hmm. And most of the time they probably can, unfortunately. <laughs> but in some of the in some of the cities. LA, I'm talking. Asking, yeah. LA, I would say New York is similar in that way. Sometimes San Francisco, you have these like tech entrepreneurs that become incredibly successful, and now they want the hottest girl in the room. Right, right, exactly. But across the board, dating is challenging. We're nationwide, so we're in 12 major metros, but we work with some clients outside of those. Oh, 12 cities. And we have about 50 full-time matchmakers. Do you have, what, what, what city have you had the most success in? I don't know that there's one city it maybe it's DC. We've had a ton of success in DC, but really we're successful everywhere. One very interesting trend that happened during COVID is people open their search uh, based on location. So previously, mm. for example, in LA, we would hear, I don't want to cross the four or five. So if I'm on the West side, like just match me Santa Monica, Venice, and I'm not going near Silver Lake. In COVID, so many people can work remotely now mm -hmm. that they're opening up nationwide. So we had a couple last week get engaged LA, San Francisco. We have one about to get engaged LA, New York. They're expanding outside of their city. And so there are so many more options. So what were they doing? Because I, I, I see that. I saw that a lot of people were kind of like, were kind of uh, hibernating together in one place, mm -hmm. uh, like these COVID relationships, right? But would they, were you, are you saying that what they were doing was they were expanding their search and let's say you met someone in San Francisco and then what would happen? Would they meet online? Would they fly there? And then if they liked each other, they would like cohabitate together and live for, together for a year? <laughs> Basically. So in the case of the LA, New York couple that we matched, they did two Zoom calls. He flew out. Are you serious? Yes, they did two Zoom calls. He flew out. They completely hit it off. He extended his stay. They, he stayed for a month. And then she came to LA and stayed for a month. And they've been going back and forth because they can work remotely. That that wasn't the case yeah. pre-COVID where you were stuck going into an office. Have people's uh, standards or what they were looking for changed? Because with COVID, I'm saying, because mm -hmm. I feel like because people were like alone, they didn't want to be alone. Mm -hmm. They may have stayed longer or like now that COVID maybe is the pandemic is kind of like, over where there's no lockdown right now anyway in LA, but does that mean that they would break up more? Like what was, mm -hmm. how was the dating with all those things? Yeah, actually I think the silver lining of COVID is that dating changed for the better. So pre COVID people were really dating a lot. Like they were on the apps going on four or five dates a week. They yeah. weren't really giving people a fair shot, cranking them out, looking for the bigger, better deal in COVID. Everyone was sitting at home alone and they had to really also figure out what was important to them. Right. They didn't have a million things on their calendars to fill a void. So for so many people, dating and love moved to the top of the list. Right. But not only that, their list changed. So pre-COVID, they were more superficial. Look, you know, yeah. talking to us about height and weight and certain amount of money. And then in COVID, they realized probably that stuff doesn't matter as much. Who do I want to spend a year at home with? Yeah. Someone who makes me laugh and makes me feel comfortable and is a great mate in the in-betweens, like doing laundry and watching Netflix. So the list changed and now dating is slower and more intentional. Really? So did you not see a lot of breakups at the end of COVID with these people who kind of no, actually I would say on the flip side, because they really got to know each other and some of them were long distance, they would have calls and they were talking about vulnerable subjects and their relationship is deeper. And so we saw a ton of success with the couples that got matched over the last year. Really? So like, can you talk about, I'm just curious about the statistics just overall with all this, because I was under the impression that like once kind of lockdown lifted, so mm -hmm. to speak, 
that people were kind of like their, you know, rose colored glasses were kind of like, well, you know, because once the, the, the availability was available again, people kind of gravitated to what they were naturally doing before, or they were mm -hmm. like, well, maybe I'll see, like maybe it was much more of a slow thing. And I was, I was under the impression that I'm not talking about your company, but I'm talking about in general dating is as a whole, that that was happening. These relationships mm -hmm. were de declining. I think there were a lot of marriages that were declining. Yeah. <laughs> <in COVID. laughs> uh, yeah. But a lot of the newer couples that got matched during the time, they were staying together. They were staying together. And there were all these articles coming out, you know, wondering what is going to happen post COVID is, are people going to go crazy and they're just going to party because they're back? Yeah. I haven't seen that. I've seen that it's been pretty stable and people are still looking for something meaningful. Really? Okay. So what is your success rate in terms of matches? Like as mm -hmm. forget about from city to city, you so said DC does well, but do you guys have any, like, I, I just like to know like numbers and data, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, you guys have a 50% success rate, a 20, a hundred, like what is your number? Yeah. It's really hard to track to be honest. So we have hundreds of probably maybe thousands at this point, marriages, engagements, we have babies. We only know when they report back to us. So right. we're working with people for three months or six months. Typically it's a short amount of time. Most of our clients at the end of the time working with us are dating someone we match them with, but it's such a short amount of time that it's hard to keep track of them years out. So they will report back often and tell us that they got married or engaged. And we'll try to keep track with as many people as possible. So like, let's say you have like someone signs up for three months or six months. What do you get? Do you get like mm -hmm. an X amount of dates per month or? Yes. Yeah, so the process, they get a matchmaker who's doing all of the matching for them, meaning we get to know them and then we go and interview all of these potential matches to see who's the right fit. And anyone who's a fit, we would send over to them. So they get matchmaking. They get a photo shoot. So we have new pictures of them. They're assigned a separate person who's their dating strategist. And that's really their coach to dig deeper on anything that's coming up for them. So maybe it's attachment styles or vulnerability. They get to work on with the coach. Oh, wow. So it's a pretty thing. holistic approach. And what we say is... Our job is to match you with the love of your life. We have the same goal. That's what we want. At the very least, you walk away a more confident dater because we get to help them because we have all the information. So for example, they will go on a date and after we get feedback from both sides. So we know exactly what our client is doing on the date and we can help them become a better dater. Do you tell them the truth? A hundred percent. If it can help them. We would never tell a client that person wasn't attracted to you because that's not going to be helpful, but we would tell them, oh, it seems like you were interviewing them or you didn't seem interested or you asked too many questions. If there's something that can be helpful, we will definitely give them the information because in the outside of matchmaking, you never get that. So you might be making the same mistake over and over and have no idea. But with matchmaking, we know exactly what's happening right. and we can help you. But, okay, I know I'm going to sound like I'm, I'm being, um, I'm kind of, I, I think I'm, to me anyway, that I'm kind of contradicting myself. But at the end of the day, right, like if someone's asking too many questions and they're that, and if they were attracted to them, or if they were physically attracted to them, those things seem much more dull, right? Like if I, if I was sitting with someone, I was really attracted to them, but they were like, badgering me about questions. Yeah. Like maybe down the road, I wouldn't want to like be with them, but on that date, like it kind of like you have, you, that's where like the, the rose color glasses come on. If you're so at the, my point is, is it at the first date? Like, yes, I am attracted to you or I'm not attracted to you. Like if you go back to your client and say, uh, you do this and this and this, at the end of the day, it means the person just really wasn't like into you. Right. Mm, not necessarily. Okay. So, so tell me. You're right that a lot of people date in that way, but, and they're expecting like these sparks and butterflies on the first yeah. date and to be totally attracted and you just know this is your person. But usually it's the slow burn that ends up sustaining I, long term. I, I, I totally agree with you. But I think uh, like out of the gate, right? Like if you're somebody who at on that day, I guess you're, I, let me take that back. Because if they're actually using a matchmaking service, right, it's because they maybe truthfully are at a po point in their life where they really want to find love. They're right. not they're not doing it for just like the quick hit. Exactly. That's true. We'll get feedback. 
he was hot, she was hot, but I didn't feel a connection. So they're acknowledging the other person's yeah. attractive, but they're looking for a long-term partner. And what we suggest is yeah. if you are remotely attracted to them and they seem like a kind person, right. go out again because it may be on that second date that you're more attracted to them. So who is your like target market? Like, are you, are you helping more women, men, age, demo? Like, what mm -hmm. is it? It's a pretty wide range. So we service... Like 21 to 80. It's oh, 80. Very 80. We have the cutest success story now. She's oh 74. He's 69. And I don't know if they seem in love, but we service 21 to 80 LGBTQ. Our demo, though, overall is successful, busy professionals. So That's it's true. people who are have been focused on their career and they're really ready to prioritize love. Wow. So then how do you find the guys and girls? Like, what do you do? What's your, like, besides mm -hmm. the client, let's say I come in and say, I want to find blah, 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 blah. Like how, what's your process to finding these people? Cause not everybody who you probably set up with people are actually clients. You don't just do client, client. Right, exactly. So we have a network of people that have, it has grown mostly by word of mouth. Okay. And we have about 150,000 people in that network. So we can use that to match you. So we're, we're going to ask for a lot of information about what you're looking for. We're going to ask you for, to send photos of your exes or, you know, who you find attractive so right. we can visually see what your type is. We'll go to the network, but we don't limit it to just that network. So for us, sky's the limit. Your person might be on Instagram or at the gym or in Whole Foods. And so we're constantly approaching people that we think could be a good match for our I clients. I love that. You actually go up to them and say, hey, I want you, like, what do you say? I want you for this I have a person that I think you're perfect for, or do you say something like, hey, what's your pitch to that? Oh, yeah, we walk up and usually we say something like, hi, I'm sorry to interrupt. You're adorable. Any chance that you're single, I'm a matchmaker. I may have a match for you. Like, will you, you know, hop on a phone call with me or grab coffee? And then we meet them. And if after hearing their story, we still think they could be a match for our client, then we'll set them up. I love that. So how, okay. That's great. So you just go up to people randomly. That's what I would do too. All day, every day. I mean, you, I can't miss an opportunity. No, I, I hear you. I totally agree. And then like they're, they're priced super flattered because it's like, oh, thank you. Yes, exactly. It's a win-win. And if they're not single, they might send us a friend. Totally. And it's a way to expand your network, right? Because that's how, how else would you know unless you ask? Exactly. And it's so much easier for us to do it than for the client to do it themselves. Right. So unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, I always encourage people slide into DMs, like do the work, be proactive and I, I think you really should do that, right. but it's scary. So having a matchmaker do it on your behalf is so much easier. Totally. So okay, how many dates would I get in three months? So there's no cap. We'll send you anyone we think is a fit in the time frame, but at the minimum, it's three. So one highly curated date a month. Just three? I well, want like so many more. <laughs> you can sign up for six months is a minimum of six matches. Again, there's no cap. So if we have more matches, we will send more. The idea is not to put you on a hundred dates though. We can yeah, it's quantity definitely quality. set you up. But it's, we might interview 20 options before we send you one. So we're doing all the work on the back end. And then we're just sending you the ones that we think are going to be the best fit for you. So I think this is a great thing for, if anyone's listening, right? When, especially if something like this kind of podcast, right? Which is why I think it's very important that you are on today, because I think people who are super busy entrepreneurs, uh, successful people, or people who are trying to build a business, you always, you're not, you're not prioritizing relationships. You're not going out meeting people that way. So like, it is like you said, you're outsourcing someone else doing it on your behalf. And that way it is a curated thing. It's not like you're, it's like you're not wasting your time going. Cause I will tell you, I've never been on these dating apps cause I've been married for, I feel like a hundred years, but <laughs> anyway, um, and I've never been on a dating app my entire life, but I will tell you my friends who have and people I know it is literally a full-time job. The average online dater spends 12 hours a week online. Oh, it's unbelievable. Cause by the way, I take my friend's phones and I'm like, let me see what's going on on there. And it's addictive. It's like another social media app where you're constantly just swiping. Uh, it's a rabbit hole. I can go and do that for 30 minutes. And I'm like, holy shit, I spent 30 minutes just swiping left or right yes. or whatever the term is, because it is a time suck. It really is. It's unbelievable. How do you get, how do you get work done? Uh, it's so time consuming. Nobody really enjoys it. 
And a major problem is that your friend might be looking for marriage and the person that she's swiping on is looking for something casual. And so it wastes so much time when you're not looking oh, for the same thing. Not to mention, for, it's, a, it's a good distraction. I get that for a few minutes here and there, but it's never a few minutes here and there because a lot of the people who I know who are like type A personalities, it becomes, it's obsessive. You know, you want to see if anyone swiped your way too. And it's, it literally becomes like a full-time job. Right. And the other thing I find very interesting is that people are their own sales rep. Like no one is what they say they are. I mean, I've seen people on that app that I know, and I'm like, first of all, you're not five <laughs> ten. Not if you're if you're pushing five six, you're lucky. You know yeah. what I mean? And like they're, you know, they they everyone says that they're, you know, under like the build. I'm athletic. I'm this. Like it's the same nonsense. And they everyone just makes themselves sound like they're like the, the best thing since sliced bread. And the reality is it's impossible, right? Like not all of us are going to be that way. So I feel like you're not, there's no, the authenticity piece is really lacking a lot of the time. Completely. You know, I read a stat that said 81% of online daters lie about something, their height, their age. So you're right. It's not authentic. And also there are some gems out there that have horrible profiles. So exactly. You know, they say that. So it's so hard to tell like who you actually would be compatible with where through friends or through a matchmaker, we get a 360 view of totally. who they are. And you see the nuance in the, in the personality and what the people are really yeah. looking for. There's so much more personalized stuff to it. To your point, I find that funny because you're right. The ones that look like they're spectacular online are the ones who are the worst in real life. <laughs> yeah. They're the, also the charmers. They know exactly how, how to get the job they, done. They're professional at this. <laughs> exactly. It's the ones who like their pictures off to the side. You <laughs> right. know, they, they have like two words in their profile. Those are the, those are the gold. Like, I think those yes. are the, like, that's the platinum. They are the best ones. Those I are the totally ones that people, agree. Right? <laughs> I matched this couple. They ended up getting married with a kid and they have a kid now. He had no picture when he right. signed up. <laughs> And I just saw his dance. I'm like, I think he might have potential. Let me just do a video call with him. And he was amazing. Amazing. That's what I find amazing. That's what I find. This whole, it's like such a racket. It is such a racket. And like in LA or people who like Raya, do you know that one? Yes. Of course you know that one, right? It's like, again, it's all like these like models and like actors or other people who try to like vie. No one ever ends up together. I know. It's, it's a like, great ego boost. It's, it's not, but it's not even because like, I think, it's actually not because usually it go nothing goes. You're only getting swiped on because you used a good filter. Maybe it's True. just so Ryan, pony. Though, like it, I feel like people get excited when they get on the app. Oh yes, I think so because it makes them feel like they've like arrived, so to speak. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Just I, I just like I just love all of this stuff. I find it so psychologically fascinating to me like what really that's why like what makes people tick really what works like all these i i have like because people who do know me like i said with my bachelor auction it was basically um created because i have and had a slew of single men always that I'm friends with. And I know when I collect them like baseball cards <laughs> and, you know, and I, I have a slew of single women and I, I find it very interesting. The people that like, Oh, I no, I really want to settle down. I really want to do this. I want, and like, they're the ones dating the, the 21 year old, you know, yahoos who are barely mm -hmm. at a school. And they're like, no, what was that? Cause I can't find anyone. But like you, you know what I mean? Like you kind of yeah. like know what people, you kind of figure out that those people don't really want a relationship because if you did, you would kind of use someone like you and like do something mm -hmm. that's more in line. Right. You right. Part of it though is pattern. So you're there, they might be used to dating a certain type and it's hard to step outside your comfort zone on your own. Yeah. So that's true. That's a very good point. And you, you, uh, that's what a good, that's why a service like yours could be probably good because you're kind of like opening up their exposure and possibilities beyond mm -hmm. what they can see in their narrow pathways. Exactly. Like a perfect example is one of my early success stories. This girl came to me pretty preppy. She said, I want a Jewish finance guy. Yeah. Like, don't I'm they sure. all say that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, don't we all do. <laughs> Which I'm sure her parents told her. Yeah. And, or a you know. if you're Jewish, a doctor, a lawyer. I'm Jewish. Right. I can say it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, so she wanted that as a sort of preppy finance guy. But once I learned more about her, I realized she had a little bit of an edge. And so I paired her with someone that I worked with who was 
covered in tattoos, long hair, not Jewish, and they ended up getting married. Really? And there's no way she would have swiped right on that person on an app. It wouldn't have even crossed her mind. Exactly. And I love that you say that because a lot of those guys, because when I was younger, that was kind of like the ilk that I thought I thought I should be dating, right? Because it's an idea that you kind of get swept up in like, oh, I, it's like, I should be doing this. I, all those shoulds, I should yeah. be with that kind of person. I should be doing that. And those were like the most like crappy relationships where it's completely disconnected. It's always the people, again, that you least expect, like we were talking mm-hmm. earlier with business or with anything. It's those like, it's where you're not looking is sometimes where the people, the things that you least expect to be the hit or the success are usually the things right. that are. It's so true. I always tell people, your person's coming in a different package. Yeah. So be open to possibilities because I do think a lot of people are closed-minded really not their fog. They get it from their parents and yeah. fairy tales and television. So they think their perfect person is coming in this one package when actually the, their soulmate could be somebody totally different. Totally. So they just need to go in with an open heart and an open mind and like step outside their comfort zone. What do you say to the women? I, I, I cause I, you know, I find that I know a lot of, a lot of even friends of mine, a lot of my friends, not a lot of my friends, but a good amount of friends of mine and women I know who are like, older, who are super successful, who all, by the way, not just successful, but they're beautiful and they're kind Mm -hmm. and they, they have literally everything going for them and they Mm -hmm. cannot find it. They can't get arrested literally. Like they cannot because the guys that match them in their age want girls who are 20 years younger than them. Yeah. It's a really, it's a big problem. It's a problem. Like the more successful you get, the smaller the pool. Yeah. So you work really hard towards the goal and then you think, well, I've accomplished this. Now I need someone who's at least equally accomplished, if not more. What we do when we are matching them is we really go through like what truly matters to you? What is going to make your life better in 20 years from now? Is it someone who's equally as successful or is it someone who has plenty of time and who adores you, could help out with the kids or and it's nuanced, so it's different for everyone. For some people, they'll they'll say, I've, I want someone very successful, and I don't care if he is not around, if he's only around once a month, if he's traveling all the time, like to me, that's important. That's ego though. That's more ego, right? Because you need to get over yeah. your ego to be able to understand that. Because the truth is two people who are like that is very difficult, right? Right, it's exactly. You never see each other Oftentimes it's two stars in a relationship where usually we say there should be one star and one rock, Mm -hmm. but then others will realize, okay, I have plenty of money. What I'm missing in my life is not more money. It's quality time and someone who's supportive and loyal and fun and brings me out of my shell. Mm -hmm. And so once you dig deeper to really figure out what's truly important to you, then the type changes a bit in terms of who you're looking for. But what if the woman, I'm just going to stay with the mm-hmm. women's side for a second. We can change later, but is self-aware enough to understand that? Cause I have had these conversations with some of my women friends who are single and they understand that they've done, they, they know that. And it's still quite challenging mm-hmm. to like meet somebody because, you know, it's just, it's like, like, I think just it's you, people want like, men want women who are much younger. So women, women who are in their, in their forties, let's say, you know, I've had, I've had guys say to me to these knockouts who I'm friends with, who are like 38 year old girls who are like knockouts, brilliant, Harvard and sweet and pretty. They're like, nah, do you have anyone who's like 26? Who's just like a bim? like not, they won't say it, but they're like, mm-hmm. we just, it's, there's such ageism. How does that happen? Like, how do people get over that ageism or what do women do because of this ageism, ageist thing? Like, what are they Mm -hmm. supposed to do? Yeah. Well, there are definitely plenty of guys that want to date around their age. So there are some guys. Yes. Hear that, ladies? (laughs) There are so many gems out there, really. But there are definitely a group of men who want younger or maybe they're 50 and they never had a family and now they want to start a family. And so they'll right. ask, I want early thirties. Well, first of all, women can have babies, you know, in their forties. So sometimes we're educating men on, on that, but right, right, right. some yeah. of them want younger and a huge age gap. And some of them want an equal and someone who's going to challenge them. So it's just a matter of finding the right 
men for your friends and they definitely do exist, but it's putting themselves out there, asking friends for setups. Yeah. Making time. One thing I will say, again, it goes for women and men. Like they say they want to do this a lot of the times and yet they're not, they're too busy. They don't slow down enough to even go on these dates or put themselves out there. And that's where I think you come in. Exactly. If they can actually just pick up the phone and like give you the information and be like, okay, I, I can't do this. I have so many friends that, that should be using you to be yeah. honest, but it's actually getting them to make that step. Completely. Yeah. And we see that a lot. A lot of people say, my number one on my list is finding love this year. Great. Mm -hmm. What are you doing to make that happen? And usually it's nothing. It's like, that. it's not going to happen when you least expect it. It's going to happen when you put in the effort and it is a little bit like a job. Mm -hmm. So either you make the time to do it and you honestly can meet someone on an app. If you put in the time and you're, you're open-minded and you're swiping, you can meet someone through friends. You just have to be proactive and do something in order to get the job done. And if you don't have time or you want help, outsourcing is a great option. How much is it? So anyone can sign up for free to be in the network, but to be a client, it starts at 5,900. Oh, okay. So, and that would be for three months. Exactly. And then how much is six months? Six months is 9,500. Okay. And those are the two main options that we have. So you're, but if it's 30, if it's 5,900, you're paid that divided by three that becomes an expensive date if it doesn't work out, right? <laughs> if you think about it in that way, yes. But we like to you think do about all the it as coaching a, and you it's do a all holistic the approach. Exactly. Right. And also it's just a minimum number of dates. And it's also curated, which I think is a big piece of it. Exactly. You know? And it really only takes one. And we have the exact same sure. goal. Like our job is to get you in a healthy, happy relationship. And we live for this. We will do whatever it takes, you know, to help you. And so sometimes they'll go through the three months with us and at the end they haven't found that perfect person, but we're really close. And a few weeks later, someone comes into the system that seems great. We're going to send it to the client. We right. still want them to find love, even if it's a little outside of the time that they're working with us. You know, that's actually, um, I've, I've, there's a lot of, I've heard of a lot of matchmakers that I've spoken to who are way more expensive than that. I mean, they're like $50,000 for I don't even know how long. Like, mm -hmm. what, give me some other, like you tell yeah, me. Yeah, some of them are 50,000, some are 150,000. Yeah, what are you getting for $150,000? I want to know. If I, I put you it's on retainer for 100, yeah. are you out there on my behalf, like basically looking for Yeah, I think love? that- that some of the smaller matchmaking companies where it's just a handful of employees, yes, they take on a small number of clients and they do whatever it takes to find you matches. So right. they're scouring LinkedIn and Instagram. We do the same thing. We just are a larger company. Right. So we have more staff and therefore our prices can be lower. And you also have a bigger database, I would imagine. But um, okay, so that's interesting. So can you give some tips? I'm curious of how people... If they're not going to, if they're not going to mm -hmm. use a service, um, be, like what's the best ways to meet people? What's the best places that you've heard mm -hmm. are the best? Is the gym? Is Whole Foods? Yeah. Arrow One? Like those are all great places. The key is you have to actually look up. Like put your phone away. Oh, that's so true. Because people are there. Like your person could be next to you in line at Starbucks, but if you're looking at their your phone, you will never talk to them. Oh my god! That's and they'll so true. never approach you. So just when do things you love. So if that is going to the gym or going to trivia night or dinner parties. Trivia night. Who does that? Oh, one of our couples, actually. <laughs> one of our couples, they went to the same trivia night and they never met. But then we like at a friend's them. house? It was at a bar. Because we do, I do here at my house, we do game nights. We used to do it much more oh, that's often. So fun. Yeah, it was so fun. And like what I would do just is I would invite a whole like smorgasbord of people that don't really maybe know each other. Some mm -hmm. do. And it was a chance for two things for a chance for me and my husband to see a lot of people at one, you know, sw one swoop because we're so both so busy and I can socialize with a lot of people and also for other people to mingle and get to know each other. So it mm -hmm. was very, there's a lot of like, there's, there's a lot of like reasons to be doing it. It was so yeah. fun. That's great. Um, and it, that's, that's what I was asking what trivia night is. is oh, similar? that's okay. No, yeah. it would, that that was at a bar and they would go to the same trivia at night, but they never met. And then I'll just tell this story because I love it so much. But yeah. what the woman was our client 
and NPR did this advertisement and they said, is anybody doing online dating or matchmaking and we can follow them? So she responded and said, well, I'm doing three day rule. You're welcome to follow me on a date. And she got accepted. So we had to match her and the, and it was going to be on NPR. So that is a ton of pressure for a oh, matchmaker. Yeah. So we found this great guy. He actually was a former client. They went on the date, they hit it off. And that was a huge win for us. But then a year later, without telling us, they went back on NPR to announce they had gotten married. Oh, <laughs> gotten married? Yes. <laughs> Within a year, they were married. And that was the couple that attended trivia night in the same bar, but never met. Oh my God, I love that. Um, can you name anybody? Would I know anybody that you actually set up or no? You would. A lot of them are private, but you might know Allie Webb. She's the founder of Dry Bar. Yes, she's on the podcast. I was on her podcast. Oh, good. Well, she speaks publicly about us and, and she's her, engaged. She, she, she is engaged. Yes. That was your boy. That was your guy. Exactly. So, so that, he was someone, she signed up as a client and he's someone we found on Facebook. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. So wait, so she signed up as a client. She signed up. And for what, three months or six months? She did three months. Okay. And she sent us, you know, who she finds attractive. And we really got to know her and what she was looking for. And then I was on Facebook and I saw a suggested friend and he looked like her type. And based on the short bio, seemed like he could be a fit. So I sent it to the matchmaker and she did the interview and it ended up being a match. So he, so he became, so you did that and he's like, sure, put me in your, like, I'd, exactly. I'd love to go out. So in this case, he actually went out with one other client of ours that we thought could be a match. And then when Allie signed up, we matched him with Allie. So it was his second match. I believe it was Allie's second match too. And they, ha they did a really long phone call to start. They kind of went rogue. We usually don't suggest that. I love but how long was the phone call? It was like four Hi, hours. <laughs> <laughs> he was, she, was in, Valley. she yeah. was in New York and he was in LA. They did like a four hour phone call. And oh, then wow. he picked her up from the airport when she arrived. Wow. So they hit it off. <laughs> they totally hit so it off. So that's so interesting because normally when people like, you know, hit it off on that way, like that's why you never advise people to be on the phone for that long. Cause you meet them in person and you're like, ah, shit, like it doesn't work. Right. Usually we suggest a short call and then go out go for out. a drink. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Wow. And then it's been like, it's that's, and then that was it. That was. And, that, and they've been inseparable. They're getting married this year and they blended families and it, it worked out. I really remember well. being on her podcast with him and we talked about that a little bit, but I didn't realize it was through you that yes. that happened. That's amazing. So what happened to her third date? She didn't take it? She, she didn't, didn't take it. <laughs> no. Oh my God. Well, that totally worked out. Exactly. That's the goal to match people as quickly as possible. Okay. Give me the other one that I would know. You might know Nicole Lappin. She's like an amazing entrepreneur and author. She has a podcast called Money Rehab. So she came through a friend. Okay. And I tell her what I tell everyone, you can join the database or you can be a client. She's like, honey, I am not a database girl. <laughs> her exact words. So she signed as a client. And I remember this uh, investor that I, that he actually was an early investor in 3D role. I okay. hadn't talked to him forever and he had been really focused on his career. And I just felt that they could be a good match for each other. So I suggested him to her matchmaker she did the interview and he was so excited. And within a handful of dates, they knew it was a done deal. So they just got engaged. Oh my gosh. Congratulations to Nicole. That's amazing. So it seems like that was like, those are two really, those are two really great success stories. Can we talk about, cause I'm just curious what's give me like one that's been like kind of a total disaster. Hmm. I know you probably don't want to like, no, I'm that, just trying to think about <laughs> Um, it happens, one that's though. in a disaster. Well, I really can't think of one that's like an absolute disaster, but I can think of a handful where they came to us really looking for something that wasn't going to be the best. Like they're just kind of unrealistic. Exactly. Like a, How many people a, come to you who are like totally unrealistic expectations though for what to have? Like we really try not to take people on who have unrealistic expectations. So okay, the first thing we do with them is to find out what they're looking for. And if we can sense they're really rigid and they're unrealistic, we won't work with them. It's right. just not going to help. And also because it's going to be a lose, lose situation. So you're wasting right. your time. Right. So, right. you know, like someone just asked me, will I work with this guy? 
He's 80 and his ex was 35. And I just said, you can send him to someone, another matchmaking company. That's not really our jam. How are you different from like back when the millionaire matchmaker? I would say (laughs) (laughs) we're very warm and kind (laughs) and we don't try to change anyone. Right. Like from what I remember. You don't say wear those those shoes, suck, don't do that. But I thought that would be helpful though. Because some people maybe just don't have nice... Like they don't know what they don't know, right? Yeah. So that could be helpful. We, If we do it, it's in a, a really kind, helpful way. But I remember watching her show one time and she's saying, you have curly hair, make sure you straighten your hair. I remember that. I, she did it all the time, right? <laughs> you know, she was just, so, yeah, she was so nasty like that, right? Yeah, so we're like your best friend and therapist and cheerleader. It's just a little bit of a different vibe, I would say. And also 60% of our clients are women. So we take on both yeah, men and women, but we end up working with a lot of women. A lot of women. And you're not breaking the bank. So that's, which is nice. You're not like breaking mm-hmm. the bank. So, um, okay, wait. So, cause you were saying before, we're saying that because how for re- for people, some tips for them to meet people in dating uh, would be, like they said, the gym and the Whole Foods. Mm-hmm. But the problem you're saying, and it's so 100% true, is no, people are not paying attention. So maybe a, a piece of advice could be like, pay attention when you walk. Don't just think that you're going to get like some apples and eggs. Like maybe mm-hmm. like kind of like be on, like kind of keep your, kind of like be on alert in a way. Like exactly. look, look at your environment. Don't just keep your, ha- your head down in your phone. Right. And have conversations. Right. We just had a couple, we didn't match them, but we know them. Yeah. They just got married. They met in line at Jersey Mike's. So, you know, your perfect person can be right next to you. Have conversations. I think especially for women, be proactive. So if you do end up seeing someone at the market or at the gym, approach and show interest, and then you can take a step back. But we're... A lot of times in matchmaking, we're bridging the gap between two people who like each other and don't know. And yeah. so I think someone has to show interest in order for the other person to reciprocate. Right, to react. Um, so you're married. We've got two yes. kids. We talked about that. So how did you meet your husband? I match made myself. You so did? I walked into a party. I was on my way to another party and I stopped by for five minutes and I saw my husband across the room. And I turned to the guy next to me who was my old roommate. I was like, who is that? Bring him over here right now. And he went and grabbed my husband and my husband walked up. It's like, I'm Talia. It's really nice to meet you. How do you know VJ? That was um, my old roommate. We had a really nice conversation and then I had to run. So he asked me for my number and I said, I'm so sorry I'm leaving, but I'm sure someone at the party has it. You can grab it and call me. And he did. And we went on a handful of dates and they were not amazing, but he was very kind. They were not amazing. They were not. They were fine, but he was kind and you know I was attracted to him and he just seemed like a good person and so I kept giving him another shot another shot and like four or five dates in I'm like this is it really it clicked for me I love that story for many many reasons the big one is that you didn't just like kind of acquiesce to what was in front of you on the dating stuff but you like took the initiative saw what you liked and you made the first move that's so bold and, and it actually ended up working out, even though it wasn't like, you know, rainbows and unicorns, but you still chose him. Like, it wasn't right. like you were just kind of like seeing what was, you know, well, okay, he's good enough. I think mm-hmm. a lot of times there's so many different, I mean, now that I'm in LA, a lot of it is unrealistic expectations, but truthfully, a lot of people, what they do is they just settle for what's good enough, what they mm-hmm. see in front of them. And they're like, well, so th- that's the best that's out there. I'll just take it versus like taking that initiative, being proactive and like going after something and like, or even hiring a service because you just have not found that person. Mm-hmm. I think those are really, that's great. I love that story. Thank you. And he is an introvert and honestly probably would not have even noticed me at the party. Right. So, well, you're you're an extrovert, obviously. Yeah. And yes. Shameless, clearly. But, yeah, shameless. Yes, <laughs> but clearly. I would have missed the opportunity if I didn't show interest. I love that. And now you've been married for how many years? I think we're 12 years. Married for 12 years. Wow. And we have two kids. Two kids, right. Like the same as mine. So when, then how did it become a hobby where you were just basically you know, setting up people in your office at E, True Hollywood Story, <laughs> to becoming an actual real business. It was quite a journey. So I had a business partner at the time and we started with the events and 
we charged for the events. I wanted to make sure that I could. What were the events called, by the way? They were just called like 3D Roll Mixers. Nothing special. Okay. We had a couple cool icebreakers, but they were really just parties. And How did you get people to come? There was no social media at the time. So we were on foot going to bars, meeting people, handing out flyers. Wow. Okay, great. So like after work at E, I was handing out flyers, doing the events. And then also while I was at E, I decided to take on some clients just to see if I could match make people I didn't know. And also would they, if they would pay me. Right. So oh, wow. yeah. I had my day job and at night I would take on a handful of clients that I would meet at bars or one of my clients I found off Facebook. And every time I took on a client, I would charge more just to see how much I could That's charge a- for my services. I love that. So that way you're like kind of seeing what your value is in the marketplace. Exactly. So how much was your first client? <laughs> this guy, I met him at a bar and he was, I could tell him he was trying to pick up women. And I said, I can do this for you. Pay me $250 cash. Bring it to Starbucks tomorrow. And he did. He did? <laughs> yes. And he was great. And I actually matched and they dated for a while, but they girl, didn't like end you. up getting married. That's amazing. And then the next one, I found this girl on Facebook. She was super cute. She went to Harvard. I just reached out and said, any chance that you're single? She was. We met. I charged her $500. And I ended up matching her with her husband. So it worked. And I would just meet people randomly and charge a little bit more until I figured out what the cap was. And what was the cap? At the time? At the time, it was probably like $1,500, something like that. And as we've grown as a company, every year we increase our prices. Wow. So how many clients did you have on your own before it became an actual legit business? We were, I had about 40 clients total. Like I would take about 10 at a time. It was not a huge number. That's a lot though. Over, it was a lot. I would say that would be over a year. Okay. And then I went to match.com and I said, I have this great business. It's a VIP service. I think you should do something similar. And long story short, they ended up investing in the company. They did? And that helped us scale across the country. So match.com invested in you. Mm-hmm. Oh, I had no idea. So, I, But I had only taken about 40 clients when I approached them. So it was a small business. Yeah, we had match.com. We went on Shark Tank <laughs> very early on. And then we ended up getting investment from other people down the line. You went on Shark Tank for this? My business partner did. Uh, she, she, I was very pregnant at the time, like about to pop. And at the last minute, I decided I don't want to have a baby on national television. Like you need to go out without me. <laughs> so she went out. It was very early before we had really scaled. Yeah. And we didn't get investment. But the night it aired, we had 10,000 people sign up. No so it was way. worth it. Did they take 1% in perpetuity because that's what they did back then? I know. I don't think I can discuss any of it, but I'm pretty sure the agreements have changed. Since, since they, well, out. I think they just recently changed it. Yeah. Like, we, I think we were season two. We were very early. Yeah, because I was going to be on for season one oh, for a shoe company I did. Yeah, at No Gym Required Weighted Shoes. They approached me for season one, and it was 1% in, per, in perpetuity. Um and I, I think that's what it was. If you're on air, if you're not on air, what, it doesn't matter. And it kind of seemed a little, for me, we didn't do it, but there's other reasons why we couldn't do it. But um, although it became a massive hit, I would have done it <laughs> if I would have known what it would have been. But anyway, because zero of zero is zero. But um, they just recently changed it, I think. Mm-hmm. You're probably right. I don't know. Okay, um, so you're getting you're getting red. So I'll just change the subject. <laughs> I think I'm Which legally means, not allowed to talk uh, about really? it. Really? Is it not like elite? Yeah. I thought like it's a known thing. I guess not. Okay, okay, I'll move on. Not worth the risk. Uh, okay, fine. Yeah. Like okay, so be- is there a better place to meet a guy than it is for to meet a girl? Is there like a dog park better for a girl than for? I think they're all the same, and that you know what people need to do is just. Be proactive, yeah. both men and women. And so everyone place, likes to be approached. It's also just being uh, being on alert, yeah. like paying attention. Right. So it's not ex- it's not about the gym or anything. Exactly. It's just about- and having a dating portfolio. So to do all the things, meet someone at the gym, do online dating, hire a matchmaker, ask your friends. Like, don't just pick one. You know, your person could be anywhere. Mm-hmm. So just have a portfolio and 
you just never know where you'll meet them. I love that. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else I wanted to ask you. I asked you about COVID, tips for meeting somebody. I had no idea that match you early on like that match was an investor. Mm -hmm. So are they still involved? Obviously, right? They're not. In 2019, we sold it to another company. So they're not, uh, we're not partners anymore. But you're. But still it was really helpful to have had investment from them. And I learned a lot. What else do they do besides invest monetarily? We were partners at the time. So we were a VIP layer above match. So mm. if someone on match was interested in a more premium approach, they would come to three day rule. Is match, I didn't even know they're still a, are they around? They're around. They're still huge. God, they're still huge. People are still using Match.com with all the apps and stuff. Mm -hmm. And IAC, which owns Match, also owns Tinder and Hinge and OkCupid. So they have a group of online dating sites. Oh, so they all own everybody now. My God. Okay, so is Bumble? I know Bumble is owned Bumble's by Bumble. Bumble's separate. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know Whitney, right? So there's who, uh, what other ones are there? Two Fish? No, oh, not plenty. Too. Yeah, oh, plenty, plenty of fish. fish. There's yeah. Plenty of fish. And bagel? there's a new one. Yeah, Coffee Meets Bagel. Yeah. S'more is a new one. They just launched in 2020. What's that and one? And that one is less superficial. So you have to have conversations with people. I believe it's seven conversations before you can see their picture. Are you serious? I like that idea. It's actually good. That's like, there's a show on Netflix. I don't remember what it's called, but like- Oh, Love is Blind. Love is Blind. Exactly. I loved that show. I did too. I binge watched it like in like one night. I was like, I was so like obsessed with it. I found it very, very fascinating. Yeah, I really like that concept. Yeah. And a handful of them stayed together. Uh, they did. Exactly. I love that. Okay. Um, I guess that's basically all, Talia. This is great. I, I really love talking to you about this. I could talk about this forever. Where do people find more information about you? Mm. Well, actually not about you because <laughs> it's not really, it's about your dating and unless you want to talk about you. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> they can go to three day You have to spell it out. T H R E E. Okay. And we're all of our social channels are three day rule. I love it. Well, thank you for being on uh, the podcast. I, I I could talk, like I said, I could talk with this <laughs> up forever. Uh, and guys, if you're girls, if you're listening to this and you're single, you have nothing to lose, you know, like what's the worst that can happen? You go on, on another bad date, right? I mean, <laughs> you've been there before. Um, and it sounds like your success rate is really high because you seem to be, you have a knack for this and you're still very involved with lots of the dating you said, right? You yeah. still do all the match, a lot of them. I'm involved, but our matchmakers are amazing. I am so impressed and they also have the intuition. So you're in great hands with you any have, of you, one. You have to love doing it. Like you either like it or you don't, right? Like mm -hmm. I... Because uh, like that's what I'm saying. I, I, I've, I've had, I've heard great things about your company, by the way, too. Oh, thank so, thank you. Um, so anyway, yeah, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Of course, thanks for having me. Habits and hustle, time to get it rolling. Stay up on the grind, don't stop, keep it going. Habits and hustle, from nothing into something. All out, hosted by Jennifer Cohen. Visionaries, tune in, you can get to know them. Be inspired, this is your moment. Excuses, we ain't having that. The Habits and Hustle Podcast, powered by Habit Nest.